Welcome to Rivals Recap, a uh, regular and uh, bago pong uh, segment ng ating uh, website. And in this show, mga kaibigan, pag-uusapan muna natin, of course, yung mga nangyaring uh, events uh, of the past uh, days and the past uh, week. And at the same time, atin din pong imayin ang uh, mga maaaring uh, mangyari in the near future in every sport na kinukover po ng Rivals.ph. And I will be your host for today, Dennis Principe. And joining us for today ay apat po na distinguished uh, personalities Dalawa po sa kanila ay uh, regular uh, writers na kaya paano na-invite po natin uh, to join. Ito po ang uh, masabi natin because of them, like a distinguished uh, panel po uh, ito. Now, to introduce muna ang ating po ng mga regular writers ng Rivals.ph and they will be talking about uh, yung mga beats na kinocover po nila. Ang, uh, perhaps is po sa mga most uh, prominent uh, writers pagdating po sa sports, in particular, Volleyball, Mac Genisio will be talking about the uh, issues uh, about the Philippine uh, volleyball. For sure, malalim po yung uh, ating uh, mga itatagal po dyan. Now, from volleyball, PBA naman po ang ating pag-uusapan. Isa po sa mga batang uh, writers ano, and a regular fixture ng uh, PBA. We're talking about Randall Yongson, ang ating pong, uh, PBA beat. Yan po ang uh, tatandaan ninyong pagmuha. Okay, and we're happy to have uh, dalawa po sa mga distinguished uh, uh, writers naman po on print. No? One of them, ito nga po ang ating uh, kaibigan po ng Manila Bulletin, Christian uh, Jacinto. Teammate po ito sa uh, BGPL. Ayan lang, medyo na, eh, nagkaka-injure ng madalas. Okay, at ito naman syempre, uh, we're hoping that he'll be the star of the show, a reluctant uh, superstar, ang assistant sports editor ng Philippine Daily Inquirer. Uh, siya po ang uh, magiging mukha naman ng ating uh, Kois and effect of Francis uh, Ochoa. Okay, so to start off ang ating pong, uh, programa, unahin muna natin ang uh, sport na PBA. Okay, so uh, Randolph, ano bang, uh, what's his store? Siguro, or probably before that, ano ba yung uh, mga magandang uh, pinag-usapan at pag-uusapan pa sa sport na PBA, sa, sa liga ng PBA? Well, sir, uh... Ang feeling ko pong magandang pag-usapan natin is yung San Miguel. Okay. Uh, first sweep in franchise history, 34th finals appearance. Mukhang promising na sila after years of uh, losing. Na puro promise. Oh, na puro promise, oh. na puro stars. <laughs> uh, under coach Leo Austria, they got the top seed this year. Uh, sa Philippine Cup, uh, they swept uh, talk and text and now sitting pretty na sila dun sa finals. Mm -hmm. And the... Uh, Yung sinasabi na itong team na ito, are they for real? No? Because uh, they've had uh, uh, retooling, no? both in coaching and uh, some uh, players. Uh, they required Alex Cabagnot in the, in the middle of, of a tournament. So how will that affect yung kanilang objective? Well, sir, uh, on a personal note, I'm still reluctant. But uh, sa nakikita natin ngayon, it, it looks like hindi umalis si Alex sa team eh. Uh, Alex Cabagnot helped them a lot dun sa spacing, nagkaroon sila ng trend sa outside, and yung leadership niya, uh, invaluable, invaluable yun. And sir, ang nakikita ko kasi na kailang dito is yung consistency mm -hmm. between the players. Uh, I'll, I'll put into the spotlight si Arwin Santos kasi uh, so far laging ganito siya, eh. magandang start, pero iba pa rin yung Yung sa finals. Oh, no, uh, another one is Marshall Lasseter who has had an up and down conference. Na injured siya. So far, din sa semifinals, maganda yung pinakita. But San Miguel will badly need yung uh, shooting niya from the outside. Also, yung bench, maganda yung ginagawa nila. Ronald Tubi, Drico Meyerhofer, they have been stepping up. But the most important dito, sirs, are... Uh, is yung chemistry ng team mm -hmm. na they acquired uh, character guys in Kramer, Tubid, Meyerhofer, and even Rookie Ronald Pascual na walang takot. Mm -hmm. Unlike before na they just uh, made their team na stars, na talented, but ngayon nagkakaroon na ng character yung San Miguel mismo. Mm -hmm. And of course, your take dun sa uh, sinabi ni Randolph and probably meron kong gustong itang sa kanya. Yeah, I think the question is lang naman. We've always known that San Miguel ever since from the start. Hindi man sila nagka-problema talent-wise. Eh. Pero what would be the dif difference that fans can look forward to? Ano sinasabi ng mga players yung mga X-Factor? What do you think will really determine kung talagang totoo ang team na to or puro promise na naman? Na, uh, Arvin Santos said yesterday dun sa Game 4 after the sweep is He's been adamant na sinasabing mas makulit yung team. Uh, before, before they got to the pre-game shoot around, lahat sila naka-headband, 
Ang dami na kalokohan ginagawa, which is different before. And I've observed dun sa practice before, there are uh, a place for philams and there are a place for locals. Ngayon, iba eh. Uh, sama-sama sila. They're mas, mas, mas buo sila. And Coach Leo Strias had uh, uh, done a tremendous job in telling the players kung ano yung roles na kailangan nilang gawin. And mukhang maganda naman po yung tinatakbo. Kaya sila sa finals ngayon. Alright. And uh, from the PBA, tama naman tayo sa volleyball. Uh, again, one one. Perhaps kung bakit uh, popular ang uh, rivals at the ages. Uh, because of this single man on the cover board ng uh, volleyball si Mac Mac uh, your your take about uh, the sport and siguro what's in store for uh, Philippine volleyball come 2015 okay uh, sir uh, i will be giving an update regarding uh, the country hosting the U23 Asian Women's Tournament next year May 1 to 9 uh, according to the AVC uh, Asian Volleyball Confederation uh, website we are still the hosts of uh, next year's tournament. Pero, according to PVF's uh, Sec- Secretary General, uh, Oti Kamangian, we are actually in danger of uh, losing the hosting rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is all because of the power struggle that is happening right now between POC and the Philippine Volleyball Federation. Uh, we may seem like uh, not a strong country uh, compared to our uh, Asian neighbors, but uh, according to Sec. Gen Oti, uh, FIVB is closely monitoring what's happening. Mm-hmm. And uh, according to the latest uh, communication provided by uh, Asian uh, Volleyball Confederation, they are, the PVF is given until January only to fix whatever it is that is uh, hindering the Philippine volleyball from moving forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if they do not fix it, I don't know uh, what they do mean by fixing it, but if it does not get fixed by January, uh, their hands are tied and the hosting will be given to another country. Okay. Look for context um, for our audience. We all know that um, volleyball is on the rise. Yeah. Um, wh- how how important? What what kind of an impact will hosting the women's tournament make for local volleyball? And what loss? How can you quantify what loss will we suffer if the hosting is taken away from us? Okay, sir. Because uh, first thing, palang, if we lose the hosting rights for the tournament, na uh, Every uh, the FIVB and the AVS. AVC are aware of what's happening and they even gave us an ultimatum. So if we lose the hosting rights, it's like going back to where we were in the past few years wherein we were in bad standing with FIVB, kaya hindi tayo nakakapag-host. And if we do get the hosting rights, um, it's a big thing for Philippine Volleyball eh. Kasi other than we recognize na talaga tayo na, pa, na we we are getting there we are going back to the glory days is um, our team will get to compete with the home crowd and that is a much needed boost talaga kasi alam naman natin na napag-iwanan na talaga tayo ng Thailand, Vietnam and Indonesia so malaking epekto siya sa Philippine volleyball Okay. And that's a combination of the past and the future, no? because uh, yun nga, nap- napag-usapan nga natin na uh, 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 sometime this year, no? na nakuha nga natin yung hosting, pero yun nga, the future looks uh, bleak no? because of yung uh, bickerings happening within the sport of volleyball. At yun nga, baka madamay pa uh, yung hosting ng uh, under 23 ano? uh, sometime in 2015. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mac. And uh, from uh, volleyball, dako naman po tayo sa D-League. You know, marami yung uh, nag-aabang. At maraming happy-happy you know, sa nagaganap po ngayon sa D-League. At uh, is there reason for uh, the happy toothpaste team to be really happy and uh, talagang maging maganda yung kalang campaign for their ano, no, initial adventure sa, sa D-League? Their return. Yung pagbabalik yeah. nila sa basketball scene yung happy. Magtitignan natin yung makeup ng team nila. It's been a really, really solid team. You have uh, the core of the San Beda Red Lions with uh, Ola Diogon 
at the helm pa Sir Amir at De La Cruz. Then you have two-time UAAP MVP in Bobby Ray Parks, NCAA MVP Earl Thompson, the likes of Troy Rosario, which was instrumental in NU's run, Arnold Van Opstal, uh, veterans Garbo Lanette and Marvin Hayes. So tinignan natin, napakaganda talaga ng makeup ng team and they're currently proving it as uh, 8-0 sila ngayon sa PBA D-League so far. How does this effect? For, for, is, is, is this a good thing that we have a dominant D-League team or does this affect yung development naman ng ibang team? It's supposed to be a farm system kasi, di ba? So, hmm. we're supposed to develop players, but how does this affect um, D-League status when you have one dominant team? It's been complaining kasi na parang ganun yung happy, it's, it's, it's running over the opposition and it's not going to be good for the league. Ano yung thing mo? It's a double-edged blade, sir. Even, uh, siguro, on the development side, you have teams like uh, Cagayan or Cafe France who are really pushing their players hard just for, for them to be able to match up with the powerhouse team like Happy. So we've seen it in the past with NLEX and then yung mga teams like Blackwater, Big Chill, and players like uh, sila Real Cervantes who really strived hard to match with uh, the powerhouse squad. So nakita natin, on the development side, wala naman sigurong problema. Yung popularity side of the tournament, dun siguro ngayon magkaka-issue given na uh, happy na naman yan eh, or endlex naman yan eh noon. Yun yung uh, pinaka-knack sa dilig noon, na parang walang competition. Na bakit hindi na lang ibigay? Ika nga ni Coach Lawrence noon na uh, you know, he received heat from it, pero in a way, if you would look at it, uh, he does have a point, di ba? I-clear mo, Christian, inabanggit mo mga lineup players. Uh, happy to play sa ito, to see games national team, ha? <laughs> hindi, hindi. Ah, oh, okay. Hindi. Kasi, <laughs> mali na. <laughs> Pero, if you would look at it, pwede okay. pwede mag-compete, eh. Oh, okay, alright. Okay, so, uh, okay. thank you very much, Christian, and kay uh, aking dating bossing, Mr. Dean Marcelo, at saka Karela Chica, pinahirap sa atin si uh, Christian na makasama natin dito sa initial presentation po of Rivals Recap or in from time to time ating pong napag-uusapan ng mga biggest uh, events happening before, uh, after at uh, marami pa nga mga personalities sa inyo pong uh, makikita and mostly ang ating pong uh, mga regular writers and uh, mga guests sa ating pong uh, invite dito po sa ating uh, program but before we end uh, of course, ang ating pong uh, Kois and effect we're in our good friend Francis Ochoa will talk about uh, kung ano yung kanyang uh, Ika nga ay nasipat and uh, ano yung kanyang uh, uh, opinions about uh, what uh, he heard no, ito po, sa ating round table discussion. Okay, I think this this week's um, most pressing issue is yung uh, polarizing effect ng politics sa sports and we're seeing it again in volleyball. Um, it's happened before, every time a sport's on the rise, laging ganyan na lang, um, there would be leadership squabbles, people wanting to take over an association or a national federation. And it's time we really have to learn from it. Um, uh, like uh, Mark Dionisio said, Kanina, um, losing uh, losing the hosting rights for Asian uh, for the women's tournament for Asian volleyball would really be a big blow to the sport because there, we, it's been gaining a lot of um, foothold already in mainstream. Um, there there are several supporters with it already, and to lose such a big tournament would really be a big blow. We have to learn our lessons from the past. Um, this happened in basketball already before, and it's surprising that we still, our Olympic Federation doesn't have any safeguards to protect um, national sports associations when the, these problems arise. No, And what happened when such a problem came up in basketball? We were banned, we couldn't compete internationally, and volleyball cannot afford that. Basketball can maybe take um, a blow such as that because it's already established, but volleyball needs um, a lot of positive things to happen for it so that its popularity will continue. Right now, we need our stakeholders to be really vigilant about what's going on in the sport. And we need to identify who these stakeholders are. They need to be legitimate so that people can rally behind them. We have the UAAP, the NCAA, and the tournaments. Now, the good thing about the current issue is that Athletes are stepping up. We have we have um, we have we have athletes going to forums and making their presence felt. And this is important because for me, um, sports is really about athletes. If we have athletes who are vigilant, if we have athletes who are vocal, 
the leaders will listen. And more importantly, um, the people know who to side with. Uh, they won't easily get uh, blindsided by um, newspaper reports because uh, media will always take sides with um, dif uh, will always take different sides in an issue. But athletes, if we listen to them, we know what direction um, the sport should take. So they are vocal right now, and we should really uh, put our focus on our athletes. And that's my take for the pressing issue. For this week, my name is Francis Ochoa. Thank you for listening to Koi's Effect. Thank you very much, Koi's, and uh, thank you very much to the rest of our guests for uh, today's Randolph, uh, Mac, and of course, uh, Christian. And we do hope you enjoyed the initial presentation of Rivals Recap only here on Rivals.ph. My name is Dennis Principe. Have a good one.